Hi guys, Alex here. Welcome back to the channel. Now today I'm going to show you some Lightroom Classic CC tips that I use every day when I edit photos. Um, some of them you may know, some of them you might not, but they may boost your workflow. So let's crack on and get straight on into Lightroom and I'll show you my tips. So tip number one is profile corrections. I do this on every photo I edit. It's the first thing I do. Um, so here we are in Lightroom. So on the right hand side here, I go all the way down to my lens corrections and click on enable profile corrections. You have to pick up your make of lens. Mine was a Canon lens that I used on this shoot. So you pick up Canon. Because of the metadata stored in the image, Lightroom reads that and knows that it's a Canon lens, but it's picking up an EFS lens, which is wrong. So it was a 35mm lens. It was this one here. And it's just made a slight adjustment to the image, taken some warping out, but it's made the image look more natural, more like what I saw with my eyes. No lens distortion going on. So if I just turn it off here, you can see there's some vignetting on the side. Turn it on and it removes that vignette and deletes any distortion that there was. So the image now looks perfect. Another tip for you is to know if your images are too bright or too dark. You can do that by looking at your histogram up in the top right hand corner. But there is another way, a visual way, you can see if your images are clipping or are too bright or too dark. In the top right hand corner and left hand corner of the histogram is this triangle. If you hover over it, it will highlight any parts of your image that are too bright. If you click on it, they will stay when you move your mouse away. So you know you need to edit these parts of your image. Because if you try and print them out, there'll be no ink printed on your paper and it'll just be bare paper. So you know that you need to darken those parts of the image. So the best way to do that would be probably come down and take the highlights out. And there you are. Let's just boost them back up again. There's some red marks in the middle of the image, take it back down and they've all gone. It also works the same for dark parts of your image. So let's just make it too dark and it highlights in blue. So I now know that that is clipping in the dark areas of the image. It's too dark, so I need to boost those blacks back up again to remove the blue parts. And once there's no more blue showing in my image, I know that they're, that's not clipping. And the histogram will show it here. You can just see that there's nothing clipping there. If it's highlighted like it is green here, it is still clipping. There's probably tiny pixels of your image. So just grab your mouse, click on where it says blacks, bring it up slightly to the right and that green icon has disappeared. So I now know that there's not any tiny little pixels in the black area clipping. Now this tip is for landscape photographers. If you're like me and you take handheld shots, um, sometimes you might not be level and your images will come out and you'll be able to see that, the horizons are off center. So the easiest way we can correct that is on our crop overlay tool. You can click the icon here um, and click on that angle. Now this image is perfect because it's of the sea. So you can see the horizon throughout the whole image. So you just make one click on the left hand side of the image and draw over and click along the horizon. You can see that line's not straight, but when you release your mouse, the image is then straightened. You then click the crop overlay icon again and that crops that image and you now know that that is perfectly straight. Next one for you is calibration. Now I've started doing this for most of my images that I've, I'm shooting at the moment. Um, so you come all the way down to calibration and under the blue primary section, I just hold the saturation and boost that up to 100. And it just adds in a tiny bit of extra blue to the image uh, makes it more realistic, more like it was on the day when I shot the image on film. It doesn't work for every image, so do play around. You can take some out and it gives it more of a monochrome look, but 100% for me, it works on most of my landscape images. It might work for some of yours too. 
Now I've gone ahead and edited this image now, um, but I can't remember how it looked before. So there are a couple of ways of being able to see what your image was like before and after you edit. You can hit the backslash key, which on a PC is next to your Z. And if you hit that once, it goes back to how your image was straight out of camera. So as you can see here, it's got all my red clipping points. Um, I hit the backslash again and it goes back to my edits. Another way you can do it is by pressing the Y key and it brings up a side by side comparison. So on your left hand side, you can see what your image was like before and on the right hand side, you can see your image after all your edits. If you hit Shift and Y, you can get a full side by side comparison and you can use your magnifying glass, click into the image and move it around. So I can see this part here, what it was like before. I then drag it over and I can see what it was like after my edit. Very handy indeed. Single click your mouse to come back out and Y to go back to your final edit. This tip is called Lights Out and what it does is it turns the lights off in Lightroom. And by that I mean it just gets rid of the interface of Lightroom for you. So a single press on the L key darkens the screen down so your image is more prominent. A second press on L just leaves your image on the screen so you can check it and see it without any distractions from Lightroom. Hit L for a third time and it brings Lightroom back. Another way of previewing your image without anything else on screen is pressing the F key and it gives you a full screen preview of your image. So here on images 8, 9 and 10, I have the same picture taken using bracketing on my camera. What bracketing is, is taking an uh, underexposed image, an overexposed image and an image in the middle of those two exposures. And what Lightroom can do is if you select all three, uh, right click on the, one of the images, go to Photo Merge and click HDR, it brings up this dialog box. and and Lightroom merges them all together. So here we are, Lightroom has merged all of them together to give an HDR image. We can click Merge, and now up in the top left-hand corner, you can see that Lightroom is creating that HDR. And here is that merged HDR. As you can see, there's some parts clipping. So it's not done a perfect HDR, but that's all three images stacked together. So what I'm going to do is now delete that one. I'm pressing the Delete key and removing it from Lightroom. And I've also got another set of three images here, all taken using bracketing. But I don't want that dialog box to come up again, I want it to use the settings that I've just created. So I select all three images, I right click on one, up to photo merge, over to HDR, but before I click HDR, I hold the shift key down and click HDR, and as you can see, it's automatically created that other HDR. So I'm going back to these original three again, right click up to photo merge, hold down the shift key, click the HDR, and as you can see, it's got two operations going. So creating multiple actions in one go using that shift key is a good way of speeding up your workflow. You only have to set the settings once in the dialog box for the HDR, and once that's done, Lightroom remembers what you've done, and as long as you hold that shift button down, when you click the HDR, it will use the settings you've already set and it's so much quicker than keep going into that dialog box and waiting for it to load. It will just do what you want it to do. So thanks for watching guys. Hope those tips will help you along the way. I use most of those every single time I edit a photo. Um, let me know what you think of this video. Let me know if there's any tips that you use every day in the comments below. Hit that like button and I shall see you in next week's video.